Hi, I'm Ray from Adventure Freaks Podcast, and I wanted to thank you for viewing our content. I also wanted to announce that we have a new website called adventurefreaks.com. Please check it out. We have living abroad cheap reports that provide all the details you will need before you embark on that journey to live or retire overseas. If you enjoy this content, hit subscribe and like that. It doesn't cost you anything to do that, and it helps us immensely. Thank you again. Today, we're heading down. We got a special guest today, my my new friend, Jared, or Jared um, Garcia, is a lawyer for Lexity Law Boutique. He's down in Mexico, and he's going to cover some of the visa requirements and go over some of the minimum income requirements and if incomes are taxed based on the visa that you obtain. So, Jared, man, thanks so much for doing this. No, thank you Ray, for 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 having me in your in your show, in your program. It's I'm very excited about it. And well, <laughs> thank you for the introduction. Uh, as as you mentioned, I'm Jared Garcia or Jared in English, if you want. So I'm I'm a lawyer specialized in immigration, and uh, well, I work for Lexity, and Lexity we are a law boutique that, uh, among other things, uh, we we cover many parts in Europe. We do immigration, tax, real estate, and, and corporate. And, and well, in Mexico, we are just starting and, and I'm happy to be here and to represent Lexity on this, on this short interview. But I think that the, the topics that we will talk about uh, are very interesting and, and please shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank that. Yeah. Again, thanks so much, man, because there's so many people from, from North America that moved to Mexico, just because it did the location, it's it's such a beautiful country, but it's so close in proximity too. So a lot of people are always thinking about Mexico is on their radar. So let's get into it. So I mean, for retirees, for all the retirees watching right now, they want to know what visa or what visas would would um, they pursue in in moving to Mexico. And also, what are the minimum income requirements that they, they would need to to make per month based on their pension? Okay, perfect. So, well, basically, there is a one that is the mainly one that that uh, is targeted to to ret uh, retirees in, in in Mexico, and uh, we call it permanent resident visa. Okay, uh, this permanent residency is awesome. And why is that? Because uh, after you do all the process and you obtain your final permanent resident ID card, the document is like forever. It, does, okay. it, it doesn't contain a, a, an expiration date and will allow you to exit and enter Mexico as many times as you want. Also, uh, having a permanent uh, residency in Mexico allows you to, if you want, to... Uh, obtain some perks in terms of, of, of the banks to maybe uh, have a credit or or a uh, something for for buying a house in Mexico so because the, the temporal residency as it is temporal uh, and do contains a, a an expired date uh, sometimes the banks they don't want to uh, give you credit for that. But the permanent residency, has, is, it is permanent. Uh, well, the, the banks are like, okay, if you have it, uh, we can uh, provide you a, a bank service in Mexico in terms of, of a credit or something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. or, or a list or, or, or something. So <clears throat> in this case, the, we, we have a problem here in terms of the, of the necessary a pension uh, to 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 be able to apply to this, and why is that? Even that we have a, a federal law that uh, dictates the minimums of the of the requirements for obtaining this visa. Uh, each consulate uh, in the of Mexico, in the United States, uh, has their own criteria. Okay, the average right now in in twenty twenty four is around uh, four thousand three hundred. 
US dollars, okay. uh, like let's say free of, of, of everything or after after taxes. And uh, <clears throat> that's the minimum that uh, in average all the Mexican consulates require. Nevertheless, let me give you the example of, of the Mexican consulate in, in Texas, Houston, uh, in which they require a minimum of uh, 7,300. So we have a big difference in 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 the uh, in the in the amount okay but yeah. in general it's 4300 because the law mentioned that you need to prove uh, at least 500 days of minimum uh, of minimum wage salary in mexico so yeah. if you multiply that for the minimum wage and then transform it into dollars more or less is 400 uh, $4,300. Uh, Hedda, why is there such an inconsistency with this? Now, what you're saying, and let me help the viewers, he's basically, help me if if I'm wrong, but like there's consulates that you have to apply for the visa within the United States. Each sure. consulate sets a minimum income requirement. There's no consistency. So you're saying that Somewhere in Texas, a consulate in Texas, if you go through that consulate, you're going to, the minimum income requirement that they're going to suggest you have, or ha you say that you have to have, is $7,300 per month. Correct. But if you go to a different consulate, maybe one in New York or one in D.C., that number is going to be different, and it can be significantly less. Correct. Yes. So why is it so inconsistent? And I would think that if if American citizens are considering moving to Mexico, they're going to identify the consulate in the United States that has the lowest income requirement if they don't meet the one in Texas. Can't they just go to a different one and say, hey, OK, I don't meet it in Texas, so I'm going to go to a different consulate so that I can move to Mexico? Correct. And, and well, like answering your first question is because they have these discretionary powers that the law uh, grants to, to, to them and to the authority. So uh, even that there is a federal law that dictates this, uh, they can change that part and increase or even decrease the, the, the amount. Uh, in general, uh, I can say to you that the, the, the 4,300 is is the, the average in, in almost all the consulates. And uh, responding to your second question, well, yes, you can go to another consulate, but not all of them uh, accept that you come in from another state. For example, uh, the ones in, in, in all California, we have a bunch of them. We have a no plan, LA, San Francisco, and I think other two, uh, two, two other more. So they request, specifically in California, they request a proof of address that proves that you live in that area so they can, uh, so you can assess to that counseling. Some others know, for example, the, 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 the ones in Texas, they, they don't care. If you go there and, and you apply for the visa over there, uh, it's 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 fine, but uh, some others, some other uh, some other consulates, they they do require a proof of address in in that particular consul in that particular area, so you can apply to the visa over there. But in in this case, it will depend. So that is why it's necessary to contact your your legal experts <laughs> to 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 review which are the the best options for you, because okay. as as you mentioned, we have a variety of of options. And, and and also of requirements. So sometimes can be a little bit difficult and tricky to, to obtain the visa uh, with the Mexican consulate. Okay. All right. So, so the minimum, the average right now for people that are interested in retiring for the permanent resident <laughs> visa, which would be considered the retirement visa, you're looking at a minimum of 4,300, 4,300 per month USD. That's Correct. the minimum. Yeah. That's the average minimum requirement that you're seeing right now. Okay. Correct. Yes. So the other, other, go ahead. I'm sorry. To, sorry to interrupt. The other thing that we need to uh, to prove to the consulate is that you are actually a, 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 a receiving a pension. So they 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 will ask you for a recent letter of social security or or or, or pension uh, indicated the the amount that you receive. Um, 
uh, besides your, your 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 bank statements where you receive your, your pension. So that is important to mention too, uh, because sometimes uh, they don't. I know there are people that say I'm, I'm retired. Okay, perfect. We need your, your to, to prove that I'm just like retiring because I'm not working right now. Okay, but that is different of, of being retired receiving a pension. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. is there like for d does Mexico offer an option where if you don't meet that that average minimum of forty three hundred, if you could show them that you have a certain amount of money in a savings account, do they take that into to, uh, um, consideration? Yes, yes, that's an option too. If you if you can prove uh, that in the last 12 months, your you're, the balance the, or the end balance of your account is for more than uh, 73, 73,000 US dollars uh, and it's consistent and you have investments, for example, uh, that uh, that exceed that amount, uh, then just yes, also you can have the permanent residency for financial requirements. That's uh, that's also an option too. So yeah. let me just clarify that. So somebody that doesn't make forty three hundred, they can't show that their pension is making forty three hundred a month. Let's say they they only have twenty five hundred a month. They want to still get the permanent resident visa, retire in Mexico. So now they're showing a bank statement that says, I have $75,000 in savings. In savings. That yep. would allow them to get the permanent resident visa. Correct. That's an option too. Yeah. Here, okay. that's the average, but as, as, as in the other way, we need to to, to review in which specific uh, consulate they want to apply for the visa so uh, to, to, to see the requirements. That's the average that we have right now. Uh, according to the law and due to the exchange rate of, of dollar and, and Mexican peso, but uh, more or less is like, like this. And uh, if, if you can prove it that you have it for the last uh, 12 months and that it's like a, a constant end balance in your, in your statements mm -hmm. or maybe an investment, uh, that is also uh, something that, that will help to obtain the visa, yeah. How far back do they go to indicate how constant it is? Uh, 12 months, because you okay. need to prove that the last 12 months. Yeah. So in the past 12 months, you got to just show that you've maintained 73000 in a savings account. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. The next big question for, for pension, for, for retirees, will their pension be taxed in Mexico? Well, the short answer will be no because all your income will, will be uh, coming from, from our, out of Mexico. Uh, sometimes if, if, when, when they are in Mexico, uh, they want to start a business or something like that. In those cases, well, uh, they, they will need to obtain a tax ID for Mexico and will start paying taxes in Mexico. But uh, let's say that the short answer for that part, if their pension will be taxed in Mexico, the short uh, answer will be no. Now in this case. Okay, great. And so is there an age requirement to get the permanent resident visa for retirees or no? Uh, sorry, a, a what? Is there an age requirement? Do you have to be a certain age to obtain the retirement visa or this permanent resident visa or <laughs> no? In some countries, you got to be 55 or 50. If some some consulates, it's not consistent on that part. Some consulates, they do mention that uh, you will have uh, you will need to have at least uh, 65 years old uh, some other mentioned 68 but oh, wow. it's not a general rule it's basically i saw that just one consulate i don't remember which one but uh, i think uh, it was in, in miami they 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 request that the 65 years old but uh, it's not something like uh in the law that mentioned uh, a certain amount of, of, of years that, that you that you need to have in order to apply to this. Okay, so then, so pretty much anybody who applies for the permanent resident visa, if they if they qualify income wise, then it doesn't right. matter. It doesn't matter age; they can still obtain that visa. 
Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. And then you mentioned there's another visa, um, the temporary residence visa. You just briefly mentioned that. That's another option for for retirees as well, or? Well, it's 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 more like for for uh, the digital nomads. No, okay. specifically for retirees are the the uh, the permanent residency. The, the permanent residency, I think, it's it's a very good one for for retirees because, uh, as mentioned in the beginning, it doesn't expire. Allows you to enter Mexico as many times as you want. And actually, uh, one thing that I forgot to, to to mention is that the permanent residency by law already contains a work permit in Mexico. So you can be uh, you can work for any company or or do your own business and and already contains a work permit uh, by by law. So oh nice. Uh, sometimes that that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, yeah that's example, different. That's different than Spain. When I spoke to Laura, you can't do that with the retirement visa there. Now in Mexico, yes, you, you, you can. But well, in this case, if, if you engage in a, a economic a economical activity in Mexico, uh, you will need to pay taxes in Mexico. So right. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you are a, a someone that is retiring. The, the last thing that you want to do is to work. You no, know? but. And enjoy the beaches in Mexico and all the culture that we have, the food and and everything. But uh, well, I don't know. Maybe some, some, someone wants to work it. That's just fine with the permanent residency. Yeah, and, and and let me clarify just a couple things for the viewers, so that if there if you are a retiree and you get the permanent residence visa, your your pensions aren't taxed. But once you if you choose to work in Mexico. Under this particular visa, the income that you earn while living in in Mexico would be taxed. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Only if you if you want to intend to 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 do an economical activity in Mexico. Okay. All right. So then, this temporary residence visa. What are the requirements for that? I want to focus on the on the temporary residency for non-remunerated activities that we call it the digital nomad visa. But okay. basically, it's for people that um that works remotely uh but in mexico that's let's say that they have a work in the us okay and uh, all their income is it's uh generated in the us okay and uh but they're allowed to work from a different place in this case mexico yeah um, and all their 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 let's say that the work that they perform uh, is not related to Mexico. Okay, that's also an important thing. And okay. uh, in those cases, uh, well, they can apply for this temporary residency in, in in the U.S. And basically, what we need to prove is that income of four thousand three hundred uh, in average. Okay, and that they work for a U.S. company. And uh, basically, what we need is their pay stops of the, of of the last six months, and also the bank account or the bank statement, sorry. In some cases, they request a letter uh, from the company uh, approving that they, are work or that they are allowed to work remotely from, from anywhere. And with those requirements that are the minimum ones, um, they obtain this visa. Once you enter Mexico, we need to exchange that visa for the final ID card, okay? Uh, the visa is just a requirement. And the, the, the temporal residency uh, basically uh, allows you also to exit and enter Mexico as many times as you want, and initially is valid for one year. So if, if you want to stay in Mexico for more than one year, uh, the document can be renewed here in Mexico. Uh, and basically what we need to prove to the authorities in Mexico is that you're still working for uh, remotely from a company in the U.S. or Canada, and uh, and can be renewed for one, two, or up to three years, okay? Obviously, most of the people choose the, the, the renewal for three years, and why is that? Because after the three years of renewal, uh, when, when it, it goes to, to an end, that resident ID card, you will have four years of legal stay in Mexico. And that entitles you to obtain the permanent residency in Mexico. Ah. So basically, uh, after four years as a temporary resident, you can become a, a, a permanent residency. And here, 
I want to be clear about something because sometimes people think that a permanent residency means nationality, and that's right. not the case. Uh, it's only you, you will be a, a foreign national in Mexico, but with a permanent residency uh, in your hand. So many people do that. They stay in Mexico for one year, then renew it for three years. And uh, well, after the three years uh, or four as a, as a resident, as a temporary resident in Mexico, you can obtain the permanent one uh, for, for that amount of time that you spend in Mexico already. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, great. So okay. let's go back real quick. But what... Is, I, I was told that the temporary temporal residence visa, the the minimum income requirement that you have to show is less than the permanent resident visa. Is that correct or no? No. Uh, right now, there are many web pages that are very outdated, and and this is why, uh, for example, the law uh, talks about a uh, number of of days of minimum salary in Mexico. So, uh, for example, if in, in, just like in the case of, of the pension, if you multiply that number of days uh, for the minimum wage in Mexico, that is uh, 248 uh, Mexican pesos per day, and then uh, divide it in, into dollars, uh, you, you have the amount. So many, many, uh, Many websites put, for example, 2,500 US dollars, more or less, but that is because the, the of the minimum wage of the last year. This year, the minimum the minimum wage here in Mexico increases, so the amount will increase too. Yeah. Okay. So what is the, the minimum income requirement for this temporal residence visa now? Uh, just like in the, the pension one, that is... Uh, four thousand three hundred uh, U.S. dollars, no less. Okay. So okay. So, all right. So, forty three hundred. They have to show that they make. Is there, if they're not making that amount as a digital nomad, is there any possibility that they can come and 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 live in Mexico and work as a digital nomad? Well, yeah, but they are limited in terms of, of the time because they will enter Mexico as a business, uh, sorry, as a tourist, uh, as visitor tourist. That is the, the correct uh, uh, name uh, of, of, of it. And they can be in Mexico up to 180 days per visit. Okay. Yes. It's, sometimes they enter Mexico and, and stay that 180 days. And, and then go out and, and come back again and a new 180 days will be granted. It's not like in other of, in, like in other countries that is 180 days per year. Here is per visit. Also, uh, but at some point it will cause some uh, questions uh, with, with the immigration authorities when they enter or, why you are entering Mexico so many for so many times and so many times too? So um, mm -hmm. that may raise some 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 questions with the authorities. And also, it's important to mention that, like two years ago, uh, usually the immigration authorities, when you enter Mexico, grant the, the 180 days. That it's basically six months or or, or something like that. Okay, yes. but two years ago they started to 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 cut that and. Why is that? Because they, they saw many people entering, as, as mentioned, 180 days, they go out one day and they return and 180 days, it's granted again. But yeah. the law mentioned that it's up to 180 days. It doesn't mean that are 180 days per visit. So yeah. what they're doing right now is that they review and they check your your flights. They, they, they see, okay, uh, show me your return ticket. And if the return ticket said that you will uh, return to the U.S. in one month, they only give you 30 days. Mm -hmm. So it's not um, it's not necessarily that they, they will grant the, the 180 days. And also, uh, if you don't have a return ticket, they are like basically asking you buy your return ticket now if you want right. to enter Mexico. Sure. So, yeah, yeah they are cutting out that part. Well, here's the interesting thing is there's a lot of digital nomads around the globe 
that that are, are moving and living in different countries all over the place, but a lot of them don't make forty three hundred. And I'm Correct. wondering if that's gonna. I wonder how that's gonna impact the movement of no, uh, digital nomads uh, to to uh, attempt to live in Mexico. If that's gonna affect that at all. Correct. Look, there, there is a, some some initiatives of of, of some uh, legis legislators here in Mexico. They are trying to because let's say that the the, the temporary resident ID card for non remunerated activities. Uh, we 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 frame the digital nomad on that visa, okay? Because mm -hmm. per se, we don't have a digital nomad for Mexico. So there are you said there's lawmakers that are trying to to change Correct. that forty three hundred and reduce it. Correct. Yeah, and 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 to have a, a specific visa for a digital nomad in this case mm -hmm. that we don't know the terms right now, but uh, we we hopefully uh, expect that they reduce the amount. And but with that, I think there are they are also going to reduce the number of 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 or, or the time that they can spend in Mexico. Uh, but it's only a speculation. Yeah, I think that most digital nomads would bypass it by just getting a tourist visa and live for six months, and then go to Belize next, you know, <laughs> and go live Correct. in Belize for another you know three months or whatever, and then shoot back to Mexico again. Um, if you know they choose to do so, that I guess that's that's one way to 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 bypass it. If they're only making a thousand or two thousand a month as a digital Correct. nomad, um, do is that income if they're making it from Canada or the U.S. is that taxed in in uh, Mexico? Well, it depends on the basically the the short answer will be no because um, they are not performing an economical activity in Mexico and all their income comes from outside of, of, of Mexico. Basically, th there is a, like a, a tricky part there in which if they are generating income for Mexico as a country, then yes, they will need to pay uh, some, some taxes in Mexico, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's tricky and it's very boring that part yeah 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 it's got it's it's tricky everywhere man that's why they need guys <laughs> like you that's why they need to contact you and from lexity so that they can be clear with what their options are correct correct yeah happy you know to, what it, to with them <laughs> uh, how did do you know like for people that are digital nomads or the retirees under the permanent resident um, visa, can they obtain the um, health care, um, the national health care? In is there national health care in Mexico? Can, can they access that that the public yes. health care? Okay. Yes, there is a, a, a something that is called IMSS, I M S S. Okay, yeah. that is our uh, national uh, security uh, for health, and yes, you can independently. Um, let's say that contract that services uh, with, with directly with the government. But if, if, if you ask me, uh, it's not so much recommendable because the, 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 the services that they provide are no so good. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, basically many people hire uh, private insurance here in Mexico because of that. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you, do you have any idea what the cost is per month for for a typical retiree on a private insurance at all or no? Mm, well, it depends. It variates a lot depending on, on the on the coverage. But for example, I pay like twenty thousand Mexican pesos, and and that covers well the the premium hospitals and all that. But it will depend on the age because uh, basically. Uh, depending on the age, the, the amount will increase. You're paying less than $100 per month for your private insurance. Correct. Yeah. Um, and with a good company here in Mexico. So also, if, if you want, I, I have a contact that <laughs> can help uh, to obtain those type of, of health insurance uh, here in Mexico, but uh, yeah, more or less, it's, it's like the average of a good uh, health insurance and and a private one, and that covers well many things, obviously. Yeah. 
Okay. Is there anything else that we need that we need to 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 discuss or cover that we haven't that the viewers could benefit from in regards to the visas? Well, we we are here to 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 help to determine which visa will be the best, uh, which consulate will be the best, and and which options we have. So. Uh, I think that uh, it is important to mention that Mexican immigration, uh, legal Mexican immigration, it's it's very straightforward. We have some different requirements, but in my experience, uh, looking to other countries, I think that uh, Mexico it's very easy to obtain those documents. And if you meet is not the, the, the requirements, uh, it's like. I don't know, maybe 90% sure that they will provide a visa. So uh, that's 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 a good point for Mexico, I think. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Jared Garcia from Lexity Law <laughs> Boutique. Thank you so much for taking the time to share all this this information. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Brie. So we're, we are here to help. And thank you so much for this opportunity.